Brad for here from the WoW TCG subreddit and Discord. Today we're doing a deck tech on another aggro deck. This time it's Bogmara Aggro, the Warlock. Let's start off with the synergy right off the deck. Let's look at the hero. If you control another Warlock, flip Bogmara. She deals one shadow damage to target hero or ally and heals one from herself. The healing doesn't really matter. Why do we have this flip? Well, here's three different Warlocks. So there's 12 Warlocks that can be played very early in the game. Mainly it's these two that we're worried about. These two Warlocks on turn one would be great. So what we can do is we can play a Warlock, flip our hero immediately to shoot the opposing hero for one shadow damage, so that this guy can come into play for free. The bottom part says, you may play this ally without paying his cost if a hero or ally you controlled dealt shadow damage to an opposing hero. So you have to hit an opposing hero. So if they have a one drop that you're trying to kill, you're going to have to choose between... The efficiency of killing the 1-drop, or just getting this 3-drop into play for free. Usually better to get this guy into play. Uh, this card can also do something similar. It's pay 1, shoot a target for 1, and you draw a card. It's shadow damage. Yeah, I mean, you, you take a damage too. Uh, anyways, you can also do this on turn 1 or 2 to get a nice fast shadow damage in the opponent's hero. Get this guy to play for free. It's just one of the, synergy, the synergies of the deck. The other synergy that we're looking at is Lesson of the Nether. You may exhaust a non-hero warlock you control rather than pay this ability's cost. So instead of paying three, you can tap any of these three warlocks. Just tap them, and that's like the same as paying three for this card. This card is just Thoughtseize if you play Magic. Look at target opponent's hand, choose a card, remove that card from the game. So not only is it targeted discard, it can target any card, and it removes it from the game completely. This works because it's one of the only ways to get rid of master heroes in an opposing player's hand. Just to keep that in mind. Uh, usually what you're going to use this on is your opponent's best removal spell or recovery tool or healing card, something like that. Um, so that is the synergy of the deck. We've got easy, free discard, and we can put out cheap, efficient creatures, and sometimes we can even get lucky and get one or two of these guys in our opening hand. Which means you can put out something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Maybe you stash a token and get like 7 attack on turn 1. Or more. If you get 2 or 3 of these into play, I've seen game in, games end really fast. Let's get back to the core of the deck. We've got a lot of 1-drops here. Yes, 4 of each. So Broderick, just a good little 1-drop. It's going to give your hero assault 1 when he dies. So you can continue to pressure your opponent or just help clear off opposing allies. Blood Soul. So one drop, two, three. You can only attack heroes. He's just efficient and a warlock. This creature actually shoots you for three when it comes into play because it's very efficient. This has the choice of attacking allies. Uh, it's really not that relevant, but sometimes you might just want to clear off like a one drop that has only one attack. So this this ally has less health, but it's just part of her kit. Jadefire Scout, again, can only attack heroes. He's just super efficient. He is not a warlock, so keep that in mind. Promise of Darkness, again, is pay one, shoot something for one, you take one, and then draw one. It's just a nice little removal spell. If you have this combined with Broderick from your hero, you can sometimes punch for one, and then Promise of Darkness to finish things off. It's a good little trade-off. Moving down to the two drops. Takara, Time Walker Warlord. She's a two drop, three four, so pretty huge ferocity. Can only attack heroes. Has a huge drawback on the bottom. It says, when this ally attacks, the defending player reveals the top card of their deck. If it's an ally, they put it into their hand. So this can potentially draw them an ally every turn. Uh, but still, it's a 2-drop, 3-4, very efficient, has ferocity. This thing is going to do a lot of damage, and your opponents are going to look at their hand. They need to use the removal on all these cards. So by the time this card comes down, you might not play this till turn 3 or 4, and even a late game draw is good with ferocity. This card is hard to beat with removal, and it's hard to beat with creatures. It's very, it's just huge for its cost, and you're going to see opponents struggle and die to it with cards in hand. This guy is a 2-drop 3-1. When he comes into play, he shoots the enemy hero for 3, and you heal 3. So this is not a, it's not something you are uh, allowed to shoot allies with. Remember, it only shoots heroes. Dagex. This guy just helps with reach. He's a 2-mana 5-1 ferocity stealth, so he can't even be protected against can only attack heroes, and he has to sacrifice himself at the end of the turn. But he's basically just two mana, deal five, unless they have an interrupt or removal spell, which is something you will need to learn to play around. 
like opposing Bogmara decks, if you ever have the mirror, this card can help kill these guys in response uh, before he gets to attack. So instant speed removal, these guys are really susceptible to that. Or if your opponent has some kind of effect on the field that says your allies get minus one health, don't even play this guy. He'll come into play and die. Moving on to the three drop slot. Hesriana, maybe? Maybe the best card ever printed? Maybe. I mean, it's one of the reasons I like Warlock so much. Um, when she enters play, remove target opposing ally from the game, and then she has that card's printed powers while it remains removed from the game. There's pretty much barely any ways to get back any of your remove from game allies. So this is just, uh, if you play Magic, think of Fiend Hunter, but it's permanent. There's no way they can ever get the creature back, and Fiend Hunter gets the card's text. And it's two attack. It's pretty nuts. This is one of the biggest two-for-ones just ever created in this game. And this card by its own has rendered some cards completely unplayable. This will always swing a trade in your favor. Your opponents just don't have much. If you have this, you'll always eat their creature. You get a creature. Um, it works with all kind of crazy card printed effects if they have like interesting like uh, like shadow resistance like this guy. Or if you exile a card that has ferocity, she has ferocity now. So she can come in, immediately kill their creature, or remove it, and then have ferocity, trade, and hit another creature. She's she's pretty nuts. Uh, or if you exile a card that has, like, assault, she can get real big. If you get, like, exile opponent's card that has assault 2, then she's a 3-drop 4-3 three three all of a sudden. Yeah. It's card advantage, it's efficient, it's tempo. This card's really powerful. Uh, we already saw this. Sometimes you just have to hard cast this. And this really depends on the matchup you're in. Um, if you're playing against, let's say, Mage. We looked at Aberration Hunter. They have no issues with Blizzard. Blizzard does almost nothing to that deck. Your deck does not do well against Blizzard. <laughs> Your Ferocity allies can overcome the Blizzard effect, but it's going to slowly kill off the entire force you spilt turns, 1-4 through four building up. And sometimes it's worth taking a turn off of applying pressure to take a look and see what's going on inside their hand. Are they a combo deck and you need to, you know, slow it down and draw for more discard? I'm not really sure. There's just there's a lot of things you could look for discard for in certain matchups that comes to the player. Bottled Void. Art quality is not so good on this one, but this is a three mana equipment. Comes into play. You shoot the opposing hero for three shadow and you heal three shadow. And then you can exhaust any warlock, including your hero to destroy the bottle, shoot them for three, heal for three again. So this is basically a three mana, six damage burn spell that heals you for six. Yep. This does not shoot allies, only heroes. We saw this guy already. Uh, for a three drop, he's actually not great, but for a free, a zero cost drop, he's very powerful. Shadow resistance sometimes comes into play, especially versus other warlocks. So definitely don't forget about that part of the card. Only 12 resources. We've got four of these, similar to Magni. It's just stash is when you place it as a resource. You get a 1-1 token, and then it just flips face down. Getting a 1-1 token, very efficient again. Just an aggro deck, and it helps trade with all the Broderick triggers. Any one pings you're going to get from this, plus the Broderick triggers, plus the uh, your hero flip does another one ping. And these guys basically just serve as one damage pings that you can either use to trade with or pressure your opponent's life total. Orders from Lady Vash. Pay two to complete. If you have no cards in hand, draw two cards. You can actually complete this with cards in hand. It just does nothing. So don't make that mistake. Uh, you will be running out of cards, and so having one or two of these, it just means doom for your opponent. Like, if he has to face four more cards that could all have ferocity or burn spells, it's a pretty powerful quest. If you're not against us, pay one to complete. If your opponent chooses one, you're, you either you draw a card or your opponent takes three to his face. It's three shadow. This is another way you can unturn one if you have no turn one plays, which, how? But sometimes it happens. Uh, you could just pay one, flip it over. If your opponent chooses to take three, you can get this guy into play for free, your shadow guy. Let's take a look at the sideboard now. Sideboard's very simple. Four of these, four of these, two of these. Four Monk and Black Fist. When he comes into play, destroy an equipment if they have more equipment than you. You never have equipment in play unless it's that bottle, but you should be able to sacrifice the bottle immediately, so don't accidentally make that play. I mean, the fact that he's a 2-4 protector is, is okay. He'll, he might protect against something. He might swing for a couple damage. He's really here just to get rid of equipment. Some equipment's really good. Gotta have answers to it. Buzzed in. Opposing ongoing abilities lose and can't have powers. 
this is not a permanent answer to equipment. You could play Banish to the Nether if you wanted a more permanent answer to, I'm sorry, abilities and equipment. Uh, but this guy is super efficient. I mean, he comes into play, shuts down all of their abilities, every single one. It could be Hurricane, uh, cards like that. You know, you could win the game. You just play this dude, turn off their abilities, and then continue to swing for lethal. He's a huge problem for decks that have ongoing abilities, and between all your other creatures, it's going to be hard for them to have enough removal for him. It's one of the main reasons he's good in aggressive decks. They just run out of removal. Only two of this guy. When he enters play, you may turn target resource face down. Why is this in the deck, you're probably wondering? This is mainly there for Silvermoon decks. Silvermoon's a resource that can basically make your hero immune to shadow damage. And your deck is like, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8 sources of shadow damage? 9, I guess? It's just mostly shadow damage. And uh, you need an answer to that, otherwise you just can't win anymore. Uh, they, they also often play a card that makes all of your allies do shadow damage. All of them, even the ones that don't do shadow. So, if they have Silver Moon and the Ebon Weave Robe combo... You really can't win anymore, uh, so you sideboard these guys in. Uh, this is also good against the Girdle decks that use Twilight Citadel to make some Dragonkins and draw a lot, but that deck's super slow anyways. I don't know that you'll be having a lot of trouble with it. But that's the deck. It's very efficient, very fast. Having the added discard and a lot of turn one plays, this deck's a lot more explosive than Aberration, Aggro Hunter, Werewolves, whatever. It's a lot more explosive. You can go, like, turn one... Blood Soul, Hero Flip, shoot the opponent's hero, get two of these guys into play. The resource you played was a token. I've seen that before. So you're looking at, if you like two of these, it's like six, attack, seven, eight, maybe a token, nine. So you can actually get nine damage into play turn one. Or even just one of these would be six damage on turn one. It's very reliable. Especially if your turn one was play a Warlock, flip your hero, get this guy into play, tap the Warlock, thought seize your opponent. Way too many things going on on turn one that you just get to keep swinging for three and three and two and one, and so you're just dealing like six or five a turn. This is a good deck for new players. I would recommend that. You have to kind of tell them about these combos, like the uh, the combos we went over over here. You have to tell them about that. You know, if they're newer to the game or they haven't played in a while, you do need to inform them of that. Otherwise, they won't understand why this guy's in the deck. Uh, really fun deck and has more weaknesses than Aberration Hunter, but... It's also just one of the most brutally fast and efficient decks out there, and it can just keep drawing burn spells. And if you've ever lost a game where you thought you were safe, and then your opponent drew this guy, hit you for five, and drew this thing, and shot you for six, 11 burn damage for five mana? Hard to deal with. Uh, hope that was fun. I'll see you guys next time.